double wing offense was started, the modern double wing started uh, by Don Markham. He started running it in the early 70s, mid 70s, early 70s. And he was a, he was a youth coach in LA and, uh, and he was a police officer. He started running the double wing out of the eye and he tailored it out of the USC Trojan, uh, the USC Trojan eye formation. And he took those components and he made a power running game running the, the, the double tight um, the double tight eye formation with a, with a flanker out, and that's how he ran it originally. Um, as he matured as a coach and into the late 90s, or the late 70s, he, uh, he moved his flanker into a wing position. And then as uh, he became a high school coach, what he realized is that if he moved his tailback over to the other wing back position and actually, you know, kept his fullback in a sniffer position behind the quarterback, that he had a balanced in a symmetrical formation, and he could run, he could run his pitch play to either direction, um, and that would give him balance. And he had the reverse, and the trap, and the sweep, also in both directions. And Don was all about, you know, having a small set of plays and working on maximum execution. And he didn't really have a fixed blocking scheme. He adjusted his blocking scheme every week to the talent he faced. Um, his big key was he was always going to kick the man outside of the double team, and he was always going to double team the first defender inside. That was, that was his big thing. In our youth double wing offense, I went away from traditional double team schemes. Um, originally, the double wing is centered around um, double teams at the point of attack and a kickout block. And if they, need, if they were facing loaded fronts, then they would shift to the down blocking scheme. So, you know, in the traditional double wing, it was down blocking for our double teams first, down blocking second. What I discovered at the youth level, um, facing more talented kids and having less time to coach, was that if I placed an emphasis on down blocking schemes first, double teams second, then I was actually improving my, the rate of retention for my kids because I could focus on technique in the down blocking, I could focus on stance and fundamental blocking fundamentals by having to rep all my plays against various fronts when you face these, you know, when you do double teams. Because when you block using primarily double teams, you have to go through and practice against every front that you think you're going to face. And that can be problematic with limited amount of practice time. And what I decided to do is um, a coach by the name of John Carbon out of, um, out of Panama started using this concept called severe angle blocking and I approached John and we spoke at length about it and I decided to make the shift to severe angle blocking and I've been pretty happy with the results since then. The breakdown of the youth double wing offense is we have a power running game, we have a misdirection running game, and we have a play action passing game that's based off of the power running game. We use angle blocking concepts whether they be TKO or SAB, wedge blocking, is another key component to the double wing. Um, we also use wall pass pro, which is basically wedge blocking without any vertical movement. We just seal off the gaps and wall off the outside edges. Then our perimeter blocking, which falls under the monster scheme and the reverse scheme, and then wedge perimeter blocking. Youth double wing offense, everyone's a blocker. Um, you, I, I, I feel it's very important that you, you express the concept of everybody on the offense is a blocker. There's 10 blockers and one runner. And if somebody's not blocking, he's faking. One good fake equals two good blocks. If a player can execute a great fake, that's going to pull one defender with him. If that one defender follows that faker, more than likely there's another defender that's keyed on him, and he might go with him too. So I always tell my kids, one good fake equals two good blocks. Simple but very effective blocking scheme with tight line splits. You know, we use zero line splits, foot to foot. We might bump out a couple inches, but we're foot to foot. We're trying to keep everything in a phone booth real tight, and we're trying to keep our plays real tight. And the reason why we do that is because we feel if we compress the formation and force the defense to compress in on us, they're giving us more field to get to the perimeter. So our logic is, is we're going to play in a phone booth and when the defense starts to compress down, either via the perimeter or down by the secondary, as the secondary comes in and the perimeter comes in, they're giving us actually more space to attack them, both vertically and horizontally.
We play in tight spaces and force the defense to compress. We emphasize teamwork, technique, intensity, and execution. You know, this offense is all about teamwork. One of the things I love about the double wing is it's teamwork oriented. It fits right into my belief about what, what youth football is about. It's about teamwork, developing that identity as a team. Um, again, we stress technique. You know, everything in the double wing is technique oriented, whether it's it's a play side blockers getting in a good stance and getting off the ball and using their proper um, load, explode, and go. Um, it's about the, a good kick out block, knowing how to make that kick out block on the first defender that crosses your face. It's about that play side wing back, knowing how to escape off the line of scrimmage and block the first backer inside. You know, it's all the little things. So it's technique, it's intensity. It's about going out there and giving 100% effort every play. And it's about executing as a team. You know, when everybody's technique is perfect and everybody's in, working with high intensity, you're going to get great execution. We use one formation, really. Um, I used to use a, a, mul a multitude of formations. Um, what I found out was that I can win with one formation with a few adjustments. And what I mean, and I'll go over this a little bit more, but we use what we call a, a balanced double tight um, double wing formation. We can add in un unbalanced elements using a few adjustments to attack a six tech defensive end or to widen an off tackle gap. I call that on over offset. Um, and it's just basically three adjustments built into one that allow us to basically unbalance our formation um, on the line and make it a non-symmetrical backfield. And what it, again, what it really does is it allows us to attack a six tech defensive end, a, a defensive end that's head up over the play side tight end which is going to present a problem to an angle blocking team. But by using these concepts, we put that six tech defensive end into conflict. We can add in spread elements to adjust to tough um, play side outside linebackers and play side cornerbacks by using the loose over offset. And it's the same concept. Loose over just allows us to use some spread concepts. Um, I'm not a big spread fan. Um, I'm not one of those people that believe that you can take a youth team and spread them out horizontally and throw the ball because I, having, having ran a season of spread, um, what I discovered was that if you have to run and pass 50-50, you're, you are relying on your kids to be able to pass and receive consistently. And most defenses, if, if you have a smart coach, what they're going to do is they're going to take the run away from you in the spread and they're going to force you to throw. So now you've gone to 100% pass and I just don't think youth teams can be successful passing the ball 100% of the time. That's my personal philosophy. There are coaches out there, I will tell you, that are very successful spread coaches um, and that do it well, but they're great teachers of it. And I think they're one in 100,000 guys, you know, that, that can do that. And I think consistently, if you're in a program, that's not the way to go for me. But with that said, I like the elements in the spread. I think the, the using a split end and a slot and breaking them out away from the formation puts a lot of conflict on a tough play side linebacker or a play side cornerback. Because what it does is if those guys are gifted athletes and they're presenting a problem for you, well, you have a means of moving them out of your formation but still using your base plays. We can add in direct snap elements to adapt to having only one real running back. Or if you're missing a quarterback, it's like having a backup quarterback. Um, the other thing about using a direct snap element is it speeds up your plays. It allows your plays to happen faster, which forces the defense to react quicker to you, which increases the likelihood of a mistake on their part. Um, and that, that is called shift on over, and it's our direct snap or our single wing element. <laughs>